What's going on guys? We're all super excited about the internet. So let's just keep the videos rolling about that. Last week we talked about Web Framework Basics. So if you haven't checked that video out, just go watch it real quick. But today we're just gonna get a little more low level. For all the developers out there, it'd be wise to understand how the internet really works, but this video is not really about that. For this video, we're just gonna assume the internet already exists. It's huge, it's out there, everyone uses it, and it's just waiting for us to build stuff on it. So what are the fundamentals of this and how do we build network applications? Today, we're just gonna talk about two basic things, web sockets and internet connections. I think I'll make another video on web sockets, but it's just impossible to fit all those details into this video and hold your attention for more than five minutes. All right, let's do this. At the end of the video, you'll know what an internet connection is and what a web socket does. Let's do it. You're sitting at your computer right now watching this YouTube video. Your computer is acting as a client and YouTube is the server. This is a classic client server model. You ask your waiter to get you a steak or you ask YouTube to play you a video. Client server, simple enough, all right? An internet connection is very simple and it's exactly what you think it is. An internet connection just connects two points on the internet so that they can communicate each other. One process from this computer can talk to another process from that computer. Sometimes we call this a point-to-point -point connection. That's the first basic part. Internet connection, just connecting two points, one-to-one. -one. Internet connections are also full duplex. What does this mean? It sounds a little complicated, but it's really simple. It just means data can flow in either direction. You have two points, you can send YouTube data, and also YouTube can send you data back. When there's a connection established, data flows in both directions. Last point to understand about an internet connection is that it's reliable. Reliable meaning that unless you yank the plug from your computer or go into the ocean and cut all the big internet lines, all the data is gonna be transferred to the other computer as long as the connection is open. Reliable. Pretty simple, right? It's reliable, fully duplex, and point to point. It sounds pretty sweet when you say all those words together. So where do sockets come into play here? A socket is just an end to one of these connections. So given any internet connection, how many sockets do we need? Two. One socket at your computer, one socket at YouTube. For every single internet connections, we have exactly two sockets. This is really important to remember. One connection, two sockets. One connection, two sockets. Let's always remember that. Let's break down sockets a little bit and they always come in two parts, an IP address and a port. To start, let's just talk about the socket that's on your computer right now that has a connection to YouTube. On the left, you have your IP address and on the right of the colon, you have your port number. When a socket is on the client computer, that is your computer, it actually gets a random port number from the operating system. Right now, this port number is 1337. It was just randomly assigned. Now, let's just check out the socket on YouTube's computer. On the left, you have the computer's domain name, which is actually equivalent to the IP address. I'm just putting youtube.com in there right now. And on the right, you have its port number, which is 80. 80 is a standard port number for all of web traffic. It's a very important number. And we're gonna talk about why that's 80 and you have a randomly assigned port number. So IP addresses are pretty easy to understand. It's just your identifier on the internet. Every computer that exists on the internet has an IP address. It's pretty easy, right? It's just your name. Now, when it comes to ports, it's slightly more complicated. Why does YouTube always have port 80 as a server and why do you get a randomly assigned port 1337? Let's just think about it a little bit. 
you and millions and millions of other users are connecting to YouTube. YouTube isn't connecting to your computers. As a client connecting to YouTube, you have to know exactly what you want to connect to. I want to connect to YouTube at port 80. Just imagine if the YouTube servers assign random port numbers. You would try one. Oh, that doesn't work. Try 27. Oh, that doesn't work. It has to be a well-defined port on the servers. Now, let's just consider your computer. You probably go on YouTube for a few minutes, right? So your socket is actually very short-lived. YouTube needs to be up 24-7. In this system, whoever does the requesting or the client gets a random port number because it's actually very short-lived. This special random port number that your computer assigns to your socket when you're making a request, it has a very special name. It's called the ephemeral port. It sounds kind of crazy, but that's what it's called. Every time your computer requests a different web server, YouTube, Reddit, Google, Hotmail, your computer actually assigns an ephemeral port or a random port for those sockets when you make requests. All a connection is, is really two sockets, one from the client and one on the server. You just have to remember that the socket on the client is very short-lived or ephemeral, while the socket on the servers are well-defined. Your computer and YouTube has a point-to-point -point connection going on right now, just so you can watch this video. If you close this video, you don't like my face, or you just close the tab, that connection is gonna be closed. The length of these internet connections can be either really short or really long. If we just visit a simple page to get some HTML, a really dummy page, we'll have a very short connection so the server can send us back the HTML and then it's gonna close that connection. A connection can also be open for a very long time. Have you ever edited a Google Doc at the same times your friends were editing them and you can see everyone's edits in real time? That real-time editing in Google Docs, that works because while you and your friends have those connections open, Google can relay the information to everyone so you can all see everyone's edits. It's really cool. Every single network application out there, every single website you visit, it's all based on this fundamental concepts of internet connection and sockets. HTTP requests and responses are built on sockets. Connections and sockets are just the fundamental way that programmers can interface with the internet. It just allows us to connect to any computer. It's so crazy, you can just open up a socket and connect to any computer on the internet. It's wild when you think about it. All right guys, that's the end of the video and it was a basic introduction to what an internet connection is and what a socket inherently does. Remember, one connection, but two sockets. Connections are reliable, fully duplex, and point to point. If you forget what those fancy words means, just rewind the video. Um, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions about the internet, just feel free to ask me in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, and I'll see you next time. All right, take care.